Before we get started, show your support by hitting that like button. Eighth grade, unit seven, lesson four, dividing powers of 10. Problem number one, evaluate. A, 10 to the power of zero. Well, we know that any number to the power of zero always equals one. I made a tutorial explaining this, so if you wanna know why any number to the power of zero always equals one, click the link in the description box or click the link in the above right hand corner. B, 10 to the power of three over 10 to the power of three. So any number divided by itself is always equal to one. 10 to the third power divided by 10 to the third power is like one divided by one because they cancel each other out and you can replace each of them with a one when they cancel each other out. C, 10 squared plus 10 to the power of one plus 10 to the power of zero. That's the same as 10 times 10 plus 10 plus one, which equals 111. Problem number two, write each expression as a single power of 10. A, 10 to the power of three times 10 to the power of four over 10 to the power of five. That's the same as 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 over 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Each time we have 10 divided by 10, they cancel each other out. It turns out that all five on the bottom are canceled out and five of them on top are canceled out, just leaving on top 10 times 10 with an imaginary one on the bottom. So it's 10 times 10 over one or 10 to the power of two divided by one, which equals 10 to the power of two. B, 10 to the power of four times 10 to the power of 12 over 10 to the power of seven. 10 to the power of four is the same as 10 to the power of four over one. We can rewrite this as a fraction, which is a division problem as 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times itself 12 more times for a total of 10 times itself 16 times over 10 to the power of seven, which is 10 times itself seven times. And as it turns out, we have more on top. So all the ones on the bottom are canceled out and seven of them on top are canceled out. Since 16 minus seven is nine, the answer is 10 to the power of nine over one, which is the same as 10 to the power of nine. C, 10 to the power of five divided by 10 to the power of three, all to the power of four. This means that we'll have 10 to the power of five times itself four different times over 10 to the power of three times itself four different times. Again, we're going to cancel them out so we can cancel out 10 to the power of three on the bottom, turn that into an imaginary one and take away three from 10 to the power of five and that becomes 10 to the power of two. So now it reads 10 to the power of two times 10 to the power of two times 10 to the power of two times 10 to the power of two. That means that we're multiplying 10 times itself eight different times. So the expression can be written as 10 to the power of eight. For letter D, we have 10 times itself a total of 15 times on top and 10 times itself a total of 10 times on the bottom. So all 10 of them on the bottom are canceled out and we can substitute that with an imaginary one and we take 10 away from 15 on top. So we have 10 times itself five times. 10 to the power of five over an imaginary one, and that equals 10 to the power of five. For letter E, we have 10 to the power of five to the second power divided by 10 to the second power to the third power. That means 10 to the power of five times 10 to the power of five over 10 to the power of two times 10 to the power of two times 10 to the power of two on the bottom. Now we can start canceling out. Cancel out 10 to the second power on the bottom and change the top to 10 to the third power. Cancel out another 10 to the second power on the bottom and change the next 10 to the fifth power to 10 to the third power. Cancel out the last of the 10 to the second power from the bottom and cancel out 10 to the second power from the top. 10 to the sixth power minus 10 to the second power is 10 to the fourth power. Problem number three, 
The sun is roughly 10 to the second power times as wide as the earth. The star KW Sagittarii is roughly 10 to the power of 5 times as wide as the earth. About how many times as wide as the sun is KW Sagittarii? Explain how you know. KG Sagittarius' width is 10 to the power of 5 times larger than the width of the Earth, and the Sun is 10 to the power of 2 times larger than the width of the Earth. So 10 to the power of 5 divided by 10 to the power of 2 equals 10 to the power of 3, because the 10 to the power of 2 at the bottom cancels out, and you have to cancel out 10 to the power of 2 from 10 to the power of 5, leaving 10 to the power of 3 and 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000. KG Sagittarius is 1,000 times wider than the sun. Problem number four from eighth grade unit five, lesson three. Bananas cost $1.50 per pound and guavas cost $3 per pound. Karen spends $12 on fruit for a breakfast his family is hosting. Let B be the number of pounds of bananas Kieran buys, and G be the number of pounds of guavas he buys. A. Write an equation relating the two variables. Since the bananas cost $1.50 per pound, we can use 1.5B, and since guavas cost $3 a pound, we can use 3G. Since Kieran spends $12, the equation would read 1.5B plus 3G equals 12. B. Rearrange the equation so B is the independent variable. We need to get the G by itself, so let's subtract 1.5B from both sides. Now that 1.5B is canceled out on the left side of the equal sign, the equation reads 3G equals 12 minus 1.5B. Divide both sides by 3 so that we have just 1G. 3G divided by 3 equals 1G or G. And 12 minus 1.5B divided by 3 equals 4 minus 0.5B. The equation now reads G equals 4 minus 0.5B. C. Rearrange the equation so G is the independent variable. Now we need to get the B by itself. Let's subtract 3G from both sides, and the equation reads 1.5B equals 12 minus 3G. Divide both sides by 1.5 to get 1B, and you have B equals 8 minus 2G. Problem number five from eighth grade unit three lesson one. Lynn's mom bikes at a constant speed of 12 miles per hour. Lynn walks at a constant speed of one-third of the speed her mom bikes. Sketch a graph of both of these relationships. The horizontal axis, or the x-axis, is time in hours, and the vertical axis, or the y-axis, is distance in miles. I notice that this graph doesn't go all the way up to 12 miles for the 12 miles per hour. I can use 6 miles per half hour. Starting at the origin, I can draw a line through 6 miles per half hour to represent Lynn's mom's constant bike speed. Since one-third of 12 is 4, I can draw the line that represents Lynn's constant walking speed starting at the origin through 4 miles per hour. You can show your support for my YouTube channel by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks, I appreciate it. See you next time.